talking and talking with my mind Stayed on Jesus Hallelujah 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 Well, I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on Jesus Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind Y'all can sing First, giving honor to God to my pastor, who's also my father. I'm a proud son to have a proud for dad. I'm proud that he's a man that lives with integrity. I can't help but to help him when I see him needing help. All right, I said first, giving honor to God, to my pastor, and to all my brothers and sisters in Christ. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. I'm not going to be here very long. I'm just going to do what I have to do and I'll sit down. If you have your Bibles turn to Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. Genesis 22, verses 1 through five. Yeah. Amen. It came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get into the land of Moriah. And offer him therefore a burnt offering unto one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up in the, early in the morning and saddled his ass. And took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And cleaved the wood for the burnt offering. And rose up. Cleave wood for the, for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off and will, and will go yonder. I'm sorry. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I will, and I and the lad will go up yonder and worship. Lord have mercy. And come again. Yeah, I know how to read this. I don't know what the problem is. I'm sorry. Father God, we're now asking that you would have your way in this place. Father God, I'm asking that you would slow my racing heart, slow my racing mind. Lord, use me in a mighty way. Father God, not only use me, but bless these people that are sitting here this morning. Let them get something out of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Y'all may be seated. In our text today, we have Abraham, who is a true example of what a man of faith is. Abraham's journey was filled with all types of troubles and trials, and also known as tests. From family fights to deception and manipulation and fertility problems, just to state a few. But he had chosen to trust in the promises of God that God had made to him. No matter how far, uh, uh, out, how far out or impossible they seem. Abraham is a perfect model of having faith in what it looks like to trust in God with the most important things in our lives. This portion of scripture describes how God promised to make one man named Abraham the father of a great nation and to use this nation to bring people and all, to bring the people and all the nations back to him 
to himself. God renews this, this promise or covenant with Abraham's son, Isaac. We must first understand that, 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 is that Sarah, Abraham's wife, is not able to have children. And in those times, it was considered a disgrace for, for there uh, would be no one to carry out or carry on the family's name or nor to inherit the land or the livestock. From our point of view, and to make matters worse, God tells Abram, Abram he's now, he's still, his name is still Abram, tells Abram to get up and go and leave everything behind. Looking at this, to pick up and follow God was no simple thing for Abram to do. Leaving the land of his birth meant giving up his property and, and the people he knew and heading to a place that only God knows. God will reveal this place that he's supposed to be going to as he traveled along the way. Abraham, Abram's obedience would not only mean giving up his comfortable life, but also giving up his identity and control over his future. God tells Abram what he wants him to do. God tells, then promises to Abram uh, beyond anything that he could dream of. He, give him, he makes a promise to him. God asks Abram to leave his country, but promise that even though Sarah is bearing to make Abram into a great nation through the child who we do not who has not been born or named yet. God promised to make Abram name great. Well, my question to you this morning is can you trust God with the most important things in your life? Remember that Abram and Sarah is older. And Sarah she decides that she would help God out. She felt that the only way that, you know, by her being so old and barren, that the only way that Abraham would have this son or child is that she would have to help him out. She would give him her handmaid servant, Hagar. She allowed, and you know, and, and, and Abram, he, he, didn't, he didn't turn it down. He went for it. So, <laughs> so she felt that through another woman, she had her husband to lay with Abram, and he agreed. And now Ishmael is born. But this is not the promised child. Yeah, not the one. He's not the one. For us, we have to trust God throughout the entire process. If God make a promise to us, we just got to stay on the path and wait till he give us what he said he's going to promise. Sarah, Sarah was trying to rush God's process. But God's timing is not our timing. You just got to wait and give him time. Because he's not always, because he is always on time. Somebody say, God may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Well, God is always there. He don't have to show up. He's always there. He, he put us through so many tests just to test to see where your faith is. Now, so in chapter 21, that, I'm almost done. In chapter 21, God is showing grace to Sarah and Abraham. He gives them the son that he promised to them 25 years earlier. Sometimes God will send us through test after test, not to tempt us, but to see just where our faith is. The son named Isaac is now born. So, so, so now conflict arises in the household. And Sarah makes Abram kick out Hagar and her son Ishmael out of the house because the Bible says that Sarah was thinking that Ishmael was prosecuting her son Isaac. Now, so in chapter 22 is where God gives Abram the biggest test 
and to test to see where his op- and, and to see where he would where his faith was in his obedience to God. Since Ishmael had been sent away, Isaac now was Abraham's only son. Abraham was committed to being obedient to God. How many of us are obedient to God? I know Abraham wasn't always perfect. He didn't do always what he was supposed to do, but he still trusted God. The Bible says that God called Abram, called Abraham. Now, oh, the Bible is now calling him, his, his name is now Abraham. The Bible says that God called Abraham, Abraham. Abraham now responds, here I am. God tells him to take his son to Moriah and to sacrifice him a burnt offering on the mountain that I will show you. The next morning, Abraham gets up and get the donkey ready. He takes two of his servants and Isaac. They cut the wood for the burnt offering. And again, he, uh, he traveled for three days. And, and only God knows where he's going. And Abraham, as he's traveling on the third day, he looks up and he sees the spot or the place where God tells him to go. He sees it from a distance. And he tells his servants, look, y'all stay here with the ass. And me and the boy are going to go up and we're going to worship God and come back down. Now, that was a little confusing to me because how are you? Well, that means that Abraham had trust in God. That means that God, that Abraham put all his faith in God. He tells him that we're going to go up and we're going to worship him and we're coming back. Now, but he was on his way to offer Isaac up for a sacrifice. That, what that means is he's supposed to kill Isaac and burn him up. Yeah, but we coming back. That's right. We coming back. We coming back. I can only imagine what's going through Abraham's mind at this point you see uh the son because the son you promised through him you will make a great nation but you're telling me to take him up and offer him up as a sacrifice abraham trusted god so what we have to do learn to do is trust god whatever god promised he will do just that but we have to be faithful and committed to God. As Pastor Monroe said a few weeks ago, God don't need your leftovers. He don't want your leftovers. Whether it is your time or your talents, we need to give God our best, especially at the place that we call our church home, which is El Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. You can't do your best, you can do your best, but this, this should be your first fight. This is your church home. You should do your best at your church home and then do whatever else you need to do after that. Abraham took the wood and placed it on Isaac's back. And Abraham carried the fire and the knife. As they were walking, Isaac says to his dad, look, dad, I see the fire and I see the wood. But where is the lamb? Now, I really don't know of any teenager, young and adult, that knows, and I'm pretty sure Isaac has seen what a sacrifice is. There's no way in the world that he would allow, my, I don't think any of my kids would allow me to tie them up or put some wood on to go somewhere knowing that something is about to happen. <laughs> so Isaac, is, is he asked the question, and, and, and Abraham says, God will provide himself a lamb. When they get to the place that God had told Abram, Abraham to build, he built an altar and placed the wood on the altar. And placed the wood on the altar. And I, I didn't read anywhere that Isaac put up a fight. But I, I don't know, like I said, of any teenager or young adult who wouldn't, who would allow their parents just to tie them up and not put up a fight. Well, I can say that Lil Patrick, and y'all, I, 
we are blessed with Lil Patrick. If many don't know, but Patrick, well, y'all know something is wrong with him, but you don't know. He has autism, and he has had all type of problems. Is he giving somebody a five right now? He's, he's, <laughs> he has all type of problems, and he's had to have all type of tests ran. And, and each time they run, run a test, they want to take blood. Well, the boy put up a fight every time. He's not letting you stick him with a needle. There's no such thing, and it's bounding him up and holding him down. But, but he, he wants, uh, he, he asks that we call Uncle David. He want to talk to Uncle David. He's he trying to trick us. He's going to call Uncle David, and I'm going to do it. Call my granny, and I'm going to do it. Y'all going to take me to Six Flags? I'll do it. So we end up having to pacify him to just to get it, you know, and but he's all right. And then he want to give you a high five. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible says that Abraham reached out his hand and he took the knife to slay Isaac. But the angel from heaven called Abraham and said, Abraham, Abraham. And once again, he says, here I am. The, the angel says, don't lay a hand on the boy. And now I know, now that I know that you fear God. And because you have not withheld him from me, your only son, can God trust you to do that? To believe in his promises, he did not say that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Then he promised that he would supply your every need. How many know that God has provided your every need? And not only that, he will give you some of the des desires of your heart if you put your total trust in him. Church, we must first seek ye the kingdom of heaven. Can you trust God? God is asking and patiently waiting for you to surrender your all. We've got to stop putting everything else before God. We have to be willing to sacrifice our Isaac. You know, your Isaac can't, is, it may not be your son or, or, or your son named Isaac, but it could be your car, your house, your job, your money, and your children. We have to surrender them all. Can you trust God? The choir used to sing, the more you give, the more he'll give back to you. How many know that God will give you everything that you need when you need it? And, and people want to say that God.